So, in last two lectures, we saw the advantage of HVDC systems over the HVAC systems and we found that HVDC transmission is the one of the major area where we can go far. So, I can summarize the main area of application based on the economics and technical performances are that we can use the HVDC for the transmission purpose, not for the generation and the distribution. And then that is why the three different category I just summarized that is we can use for the long distance bulk power transmission, we can use for even though underground and submarine cables and we can have this asynchronous connection of AC system with the different frequencies, we can use HVDC system. And last but not least that we can control the power with the help of HVDC transmission system and also we can stabilize the power system efficiently. So, we can say this HVDC application is again, again I can summarize here means based on the interconnections the three types of HVDC links are possible. One is the HVDC transmission system where bulk power trans power is transmitted from one point to another point over the long distance. Another application that we can use this HVDC system for the back to back connections where the rectification and inversion is done at the same place or may be very near to each other and the major concern of this is to control the power from one region, one area to another area or one region to another region. It can be also used sometimes to connect as I said the two different, different frequency system, but also we can use the AC and DC parallel to stabilize the AC system by modulating the power over the AC lines. This is also very fast control, DC control lines are there and thereby we can reduce the fault level and also we can go for the fast clearing time that can be achieved by the HVDC system. Now, we have to go for the major or principal parts of HVDC transmission system. If you will see this figure where the various components are the shown to you, here if you will see that we have the converter, this one station here converter, here normally it is called rectification if the power is flowing from this end to this end and this is called your inverter. So, the major portion here in the HVDC system are very important part of the HVDC system is your converters and we require at least two converters that is in two terminal HVDC link. Another aspect is the transformer. So, we are here, here this configuration basically used for the 12 pulse operation, we will discuss the 12 pulse operation later on, what is the 12 pulse, what is the 6 pulse operation, that is why here it is written normally the 6 pulse and the 12 pulse operations are used in the HVDC transmission systems. So, here one here system is giving 6 pulse, another is giving your 6 pulse, so normally if you are combined with the two different type of transformers, we again I will discuss that if you are having a star star connection one transformer, another we are having a star delta, we are getting 30 degree shift and thereby we can get the 12 pulse operation. So, here we are having the transformers and these transformers are called the converter transformers. These transformers are not the similar to the conventional transformers, we will see the property of the transformer later on today itself. So, we are having the transformers at the rectification end and also we are having the transformers at the your inverter ends. Apart from that, we are having the filters as you know the, the use of filters to filter out the harmonics and these filters also at the same time provide the reactive power support at the fundamental frequency. They are filtering out the harmonics at the various maybe fifth and seventh or uh, eleventh and thirteenth harmonics, but at the same time they provide the reactive power support to this station at the fundamental frequency that can be also proved later on. Apart from that we are using here the smoothing reactors to reduce the DC current triple in the DC transmission system and here this is no doubt we are having the transmission line that is a DC lines. Apart from that here if you are using the ground as a path if one terminal here this is a basically bipolar operation is there. So, if you are using one terminal only then ground will be used as the return path. So, we require the grounding rods to provide the path. So, that will be also discussed today. Now, let us first start your converters. The here as I said the converters are the main part of HVDC system and each HVDC transmission system has at least two converters, one as it end. So, it is called the two terminal HVDC. If you are having the three terminal HVDC, then you require the three converters. 
So, the sending end converters basically work as a rectifier from AC to DC power rate converts and however, the converter at the receiving end works as your inverter means it converts the DC power to AC power. But here in actual operation it is very difficult to say which converter is working as a rectifier which is a inverter because if it is only power is flowing then only you can say that this is a rectification this is inversion. But this rectifier can work as inverter and this inverter can work as rectifier if the reversal of the power is required. So, means that is why here we are calling it a converter rather than inverter and the rectification. The converter means it can operate in rectification mode as well as the inverter mode. We know this converter here basically it is a different type of converter configurations are possible and several thyristors are connected in series and parallel to provide the reasonable voltage and normally if you are connecting so many thyristors in parallel and series here normally in this course I will refer as a valve. Valve is nothing as switching device we are just uh, consisting of thyristors. They are connected either in parallel or in series to provide the voltage and the current ratings. Now, you know the a simple a single thyristor or GTO here this, this table shows that the various switching device that is a power electronics uh, semiconductor devices including thyristors, GTOs, IGBTs, SI thyristors normally it is known as the static induction thyristor, MCT and your MOSFETs. Now, you can see although this table is not very lightest, but still you can see the maximum voltage rating available for a single thyristor unit is 8 kV and it can handle almost 404 kilo ampere current. Similarly, if you see the GTOs it is less than here, but current rating is more IJBT is also it is less and others are still having the less voltage as well as the current rating. This shows that is the voltage blocking whether it is symmetrical and unsymmetrical also the gating what is the pulse or current or continuous mode voltage and current it is given. The conduction drop across each individual unit it is here it is also written in the voltage. The switching frequency is even though thyristors conventional thyristors may go up to 1 kilohertz even though your GTOs it is 2.5 and IGBT is even though higher it is we can go for 3.5 uh, 20 kilohertz. But it is also expected that we can achieve these devices up to even though thyristor can go up to 10 kilo volt even the GTOs also can be available for the 10 kilo volt and results are going on and we may expect in the future all, all these things. But still it is a single thyristor is not sufficient to provide the complete rating of the HBDC transmission system. Because we are talking high voltage means we have to go for the various individual units they should be connected in series and parallel to give your complete power capability that is required for the HPDC system. Even though sometimes we will see a requirement voltage for a system let us suppose you are talking about the monopolar operation we require 100 kilo volt system consisting of 1 kilo ampere here current. This converter configuration means power is here your 100 megawatt. The required unit let us suppose one thyristor it is your 5 kilo kilo volt is required we should always go for more and more more than here what is required. Suppose we are adding here if you divide by this it shows that 100 divided by 5 it shows that you require 20 thyristors they should be connected in series. This thyristor let us suppose it is having 1 kilo ampere but that is also not sufficient what we have to do this rating is no doubt the same, but sometimes if one thyristor fails then we should have some other so that it can take care of because it is not possible to take out the converters every time from the service and maintain it. So, what happens even the one for example, if you will see here the 20 we are just connecting here 20 and here you can say even the one converter here the thyristor fails failing means what normally it becomes puncture. So, what happens if you are using 20 here in series now if one get puncture now you are having only 19 what will happen all will be punctured because it, that, that, that cannot bear the voltage which is required for this 10, 100, uh, 10, 100 kilo volt. So, what we do we go for the some safety margin. So, we go for more than the 20 required here also it is 1 kilo ampere means we have to go for the parallel to give more capability. 
So, we have to go for to increase or to provide the converter configuration, we have to go for large number of series and parallel combination. Normally, to increase the current rating, we have to go for the parallel as you know. If you are going to increase the voltage rating, you have to go for the series thyristors or GTOs and then you can have the combination of all these to give the required rating of the converters. Sometimes it is not only valve, we can have the converters in series means we can have all the 6 pulse converters we can have in series that can also increase the voltage capability as well as the current capability. So, that is why here it is written if you want to increase the current capability of the converter station then you can options are you can increase the valves in the parallel, thyristors in parallel. Now, the question arises: what is the difference between th thyristor and valves? As I said the valves are combination of several thyristors it is not only one thyristor. So, valve I am talking so many thyristors and you have, they are series and parallel and we are making one box like this. So, the either you can make the valves in parallel or you can make the thyristors in parallel or you can go for the bridges in the parallel or you can have the combination of all these. Similarly, if you are going for the voltage rating of converter station then you have to increase the valves or the bridges or the combination of these to make require voltage capability of this converters. Normally, the bridge converters are used for HVDC transmission system and we will prove and we will see in the next lecture how why we are using the bridge converters, what is the capability, what are the main ma major features are required for the converters, we will examine and we will find the bridge converter is suitable for HVDC systems. So, that is why here I have summarized the main requirement of valves are that as you know it is the main requirements, it is the main requ requirement of the switching any switching circuit, any switching device. So, once it is a conducting, it must allow the current flow with the low voltage drop across it during the conduction phase and it should offer the high resistance or impedance during the non-conducting phase. This is just like a, it should behave like an ideal switch. If switch is closed, it should offer the minimum impedance and if it is open, it should offer the infinite impedance. Another requirement is that it should withstand the high peak inverse voltage during the non-conducting phase. If you are making the converter, some as you know, there may be the various type of convert, uh, con converter conduction modes. It may be two valve conduction, it may be three valve conduction, it may be four valve conduction. Again, we will see how these modes of operation of conduction of the valves or uh, converters are coming up. So, in during that time, if the two are working, the remaining will experience the reverse voltage and it should have the peak inverse voltage capability. Otherwise, what will happen? The this thyristors or your valve may get, get damaged. Another capability required that it should allow a reasonably short commutation margin angle during the inverter operation. This commutation margin angle also we will see when we will analyze the inverter operation that that is required for proper this off of the converter or you can say valves during the inverter operation. Otherwise, what will happen? There will be commutation failure and if computation failure occurs means there are so many harmonics are going to be generated in the system. Another requirement that there should be smooth control of conducting and non-conducting phases. Phases here again will the three phases we will see the from the conduction from one phase to another phase it should be very smooth transition from one phase to another phase it should not be abrupt. If it is abrupt there is also there are so many transients so many other things will arise and that may lead to a failure of your converters. Let us see here you know there is a two type of converters in terms of your storage device which is used. Normally, we can say the current source converters and the voltage source converters. In the con uh, current source converters basically we use the inductor and here in the voltage source uh, converter we use the capacitors. Normally, they are treated as the CSC and the VSC, but here in HVDC application we use the CSC. However, the voltage source converters are used for the SVC and the STATCOM applications even though for active filters also. Let us compare this uh, CSC and the VSC. In the CSC here, I think I should explain here, this as I said at its name the here current source converter means current is constant we are dealing with the current. So, here inductor is used in the DC side however, here the capacitor is used in the DC side. 
this is in the CSC mode we operate the constant current mode means current is normally kept constant however here the voltage is constant of the DC side. The CSC is giving more loss the reason is that even though what happens for example here the current is always constant even though you are changing the voltage your I square R loss will be the always the same and it will be the highest. However, here you are changing the current and voltage is constant so I square R loss will be changing means depending upon your loading of the system this current is changing means your loss is also changing. However, here the current is always constant and that is why I square R is always higher in the current source converters. This is the fast and accurate control is possible but this control is slow due to the capacitor because the capacitor here the always you cannot due to the capacitor basically the control becomes slightly slower here. But this is large and expensive because you require the smoothing reactors and reactor size you will see it is very very large and it is very expensive compared to the capacitor. So, this is expensive and the large this is a smaller and the less because capacitor you can have even the higher rating with a smaller size. This is a more fault tolerant and more reliable here it says that the VSC is not in so much it is less tolerant and the less reliable, but the control here the of CSC is the simpler compared to the control of this one it is a complex controller it is requiring the voltage source. And it is not easily expendable in series, but you can expand here because voltage you can add it. Here the current is constant, so you cannot add in series you, that is the difficulty. So, if you compare here and there it is very difficult to say which one we are going to use, but normally in HBDC we use the current source converter the reason is that here normally we want the huge uh, power transfer from one end to another end and we keep the current here constant if you are going for the current constant controller here. So, we have to go for your inductor and your converter here which we are using that will be the VDC here basically it is control. However, in the VSC this is a constant and current is control. So, in HBDC system we go for the CSC and it is we will see the controller becomes very very simple and that is why the current source converters are used. We will again analyze detail about this converters here we will see and then we just go for the, the switching circuit will be modeled as the equivalent electrical circuit. Now, let us go to another important element in HVDC transmission is your converter transformer. Here we call it the converter transformer because it is very near to the converter and this is a not a normal transformer it is a specially made converter transformers are used because it should have uh, some features especially if you will see uh, this converter transformer there are so many if you are switching any device there are so many transients are generated so many harmonics are generated that is passing through this converter transformer and that is why this transformer should be made of a special so that it should not get damaged it should operate satisfactorily and also we will see these transformers require online load typing changing means the OLTC option should be there means on load or online type changing transformers means there should be the typings that keep on changing very frequently here. So, for a 6 pulse converter a conventional 3 phase or 3 single phase transformers can be used because we are having the 3 phases for example, here we are having 3 phases that should be basically a transformer here that is a 3 phases. So, either you can use a tra single transformer of 3 phase or you can have a 3 transformers of single phases you can also use. In the 12 pulse converter configuration the following transformers are used you can use for each here the phases here the 3 now. Now, we are going to have a another pulse here means here 3. So, now we can have this one for each. So, we require 6 single phase 2 winding transformer because this is a 2 binding this is 6 pulse this is 6 pulse is going to add it with the some shift. So, we require here either 6 transformers of the 2 winding or we can have the 3 single phase transformer of the 3 winding transformer or the reverse is also true or we can go for the 2 3 phase 2 winding transformer means here you can say we are using 2 
three phase transformer one with the two windings means this is a primary and secondary primary and secondary. So, in converter transformer as it is in here it is not possible to use the winding close to yoke since the potential of its winding connection is determined by the connecting walls means here all the windings even though if you are very near to yoke or very near to your core or surrounding they can with this stand very high voltage because someone if one conductor is a one wall pair of wall is conducting other walls are experiencing some voltage and that voltage can be reflected back to the transformer winding. So, huge voltage is appearing across the winding. So, all the windings must be properly insulated and it should if they stand the complete voltage. We will see when we will talk about the voltages of these valves then it will be clear that what much how much voltages they are experiencing during the conducting phase and during the non-conducting phase as well. So, as a leakage flux of a converter transformer contains very high harmonic contents it produces a great eddy current loss and hot spots in the transformer. Here as we will see due to the switching of the converter valves there is so many transients and harmonics are entering in the transformer. So, there is a huge and they are of high harmonics components. So, you know the eddy current, eddy current and your core loss here this hysteresis and your eddy current loss here some constant it is F square B m square here you must be knowing this is here K 1 F into B m K power n n is normally 1.6. So, they are related with the frequency if you are going for more frequency harmonics are there. So, more loss will be there and more loss. So, more heat dissipation is required and there is a possibility that hot spot. Hot spot is nothing but if you are here the transformer is there and we are having bindings there is at the core ends here there is more flux is flowing there is a there is some sort of here puncture or some sort of hot spot will occur in the transformer binding in the course. Now, for the 12 pulse here if you are using the two transformers then if you are using this is your star star transformer this transformer should be star delta. What it happens with this you are getting a here the bridge converter it is giving 6 pulse. This is also giving your 6 pulse individually if you are connecting here with this transformer what happens this 6 pulse is going to be shifted by the 30 degree due to this transformer winding and thereby you will get a 12 pulse operation 12 pulse means there is a pulses in one cycle. So, 6 pulse means in one cycle you are getting 6 pulses. So, here if you are using the two transformers and going for the 12 pulse you must use here star star and star delta means you have to shift the 30 degree so that you can get the 12 pulse operation. Another here since the fault current due to fault across the valve is predominantly controlled by the transformer impedance that is why the leakage here impedance of the converter transformers are made higher than the conventional transformer. In the normal transformer normally we try to minimize the reactance because if a reactance is more then the power flow in that line will be less. As you know here if you are having the two elements it is your x you know this power flow from here to here it is a v1 v2 over x sin delta. We try to minimize here in the conventional transformer, but here we intensely make go for the more leakage impedance because this transformer if something going to run here or some fault is there the whole current will be going to flow here because there is no resistance in the circuit and if only the inductance is there. So, normally we go for more leakage reactance so that at least it can limit the current and thereby of course, the control action will come into the picture and finally, it will try to open this converter finally, the current can be stopped. Another feature of the transformer is here your online tap changers are used. Here what we do the online tap changers means you know the typings of one of the side of the transformer is keep on varying. You know there are two type of type changers are available one is your one is your offload type changers another is your unload type changers. 
offload trap changes are once you have to take it out and then you have to change the tappings and then you can put it in the service. However, in the onload tap changes, changes, it should be automatically keep on changing during the operation. And we go for the special arrangement so that if you are changing from one position to another position in the winding, there should not be any spark. So, we made some special arrangement so that the voltage change from one to one step, it should not be very abrupt and thereby a special mechanism is used and that is why it is expensive. And in this case, it is uh, so frequently used because your controller always try to see to change this event. Because here the controllers we are using, it will be that to change the voltage, it will be changing here. If this is exhausted, it will try to change here. So, it is so frequently changed because this A is changed. Normally, you will see this A, I am not writing A1, uh, this is to A. The representation, you know, it is made in one of the side, but we are representing in this side because we will see this EA should come in the AC side and then we can go for the Y bus and other things that is coming in the Y bus part. Here, this one is appearing because this variable is changing. So, intensely here it is 1 to A will be, it will be written and we will see when we will talk about the AC DC load flow, why we are making A is to 1. Similarly, we are also going this side also means another side that is your inverter side because the same transformers are used and it is your this is your inverter and here it is here we are writing 1, one is to a similarly if it is 12 pulse so we are having another transformer 3 winding and it is also 1 is to a So, online changes are used so that we can control these valves, these HVDC systems very efficiently. Another, even though this type changes can be used to provide the reactive power support, you know the changing of your A, it means that you are changing the reactive power from one end to another end. Another important that is a component of HVDC system is that just we have to go for the smoothing reactor. This reactor is used to reduce the ripples of the DC current that is flowing in the transmission line. So, as its name here it is written, these reactors are used for smoothing the DC current ripples output in the DC line. It also limits the rate of rise of fault current in case of DC line short circuit. Means, if here there is some fault from this voltage to ground, so, this inductor will come in the picture and this current the rise will be not so fast and it will try to limit it. And due to this limitation, the current will rise of course, because this will work as a short circuit in the steady state, but by that time the converter control will take action because it will see the more current is flowing and it will try to operate this valve in a such a fashion to reduce the current here. But in the beginning, it is required. So, this smoothing reactor is also provide some sort of safety for the fault current which is happening from line to ground or line to line. So, a special type of reactors are used normally the partial or total air core magnetically shielded reactors are used even though sometimes the disc coil type of windings are used and the breast width to withstand the high short circuit current because this current will be very very high and therefore it should withstand otherwise it will be damaged. Another option here we made you know the transformer saturation because if you see here you know the saturation here curve now this zone we just we go for the longer one so that the saturation reactance uh, or saturation inductance should not be too low means this slope should be normally like here. Now another component that we will see is the harmonic filters. Even though we can go for the various type of pulse with modulated control, but still we cannot avoid the harmonics generation by the converter circuit. It will generate the harmonics to the system and if you, you are using the conventional thyristors and we will see and we will analyze that the, the characteristic harmonics will be your n p plus minus 1 will be the characteristic harmonics where n is integer. So, for and p is the number of pulses. If you are operating the 6 pulse converter, means you are using only this one half of this. So, you are going to have 
the our harmonics is a fifth, fifth and seventh, eleven and thirteen, and so on. Magnitude of the fifth and seventh will be completely higher compared to other harmonics, and then we have to provide the minimum impedance for this type of currents that it should be grounded. So the harmonic filters are basically provide the low impedance path to the ground for the harmonics for which it is designed. Now you know the two type of filters are there again we will discuss the more filter design later on in this course, but the two type of filters are available one is called the tune field filters another is a band pass filters. So here normally we use the tuned filters for the specific components here, here, here and then we put in the system. So an extra advantage of putting the filter here of the tune because these tuned filters they will be providing the minimum impedance for which they are designed. But at the fundamental frequency that is our, your 50 hertz or 60 hertz, it will provide the reactive power support that will be required to the, your, your converters. So the filters that is why here it is read they are connected to the converter terminals so that harmonics should not enter to the, your AC system. Normally this converters uh, the filters are basically used here this is your bus bar we normally use the filters here. We are not using the filters here, we are using the filters here and this transformers are basically prone to bear the harmonics current here. So it is not possible as it is written it is not possible to prevent or to protect all the harmonics entering from the DC side to AC side it is not possible because we are having a large number of harmonics but their magnitudes are very very less and thereby we can ignore and that can be allowed to the system that flow in the system. Sometimes here the these are the frequencies other than these frequencies may also present in the system and those are called the non-characteristic harmonics that due to the overlapping of the wall conductions we will see it is not only this we are going to having some intermediate frequencies as well and thereby we should also protect but it is a very very difficult and that magnitude is very less. So we go for these because these are having the lion's share the highest magnitude and we try to put the filters for only the limited number of harmonics here. As you know if you are going for the large frequencies are increasing and going to put the filters for that the size of filter of here it will be lesser compared to here in 13th. Again due to the L and C combination for the tuning of those components. So as I said here these filters are also providing the reactive power support at the fundamental frequency that is required for the smooth operation of HVDC link. Another component is your this overhead line. Basically this design difference in the line here for the AC and DC is not much different. We use the conventional conductor itself and here these lines are designed and operating on the actual voltage. However, the transmission line for the AC system it is the we are designing for the peak voltages because here the we are talking about the average the DC is the constant. Suppose you are talking here is your 100 kilo volt this line will be designed for the 100 kilo volt only. But if it is AC system then 100 kilo volt AC system means it is 100 multiplied by under root 2 it should be operating. So the design should be almost same only just we have to see how many conductors are required if you are using bipole operation then the two conductors will be going if it is a monopolar operation you require only one conductor. And if even you are going for homopolar you require two conductors and they are going on the same tower. Again in this case also you will find the it is not a single conductor. We go for the bundle conductors also. If you are going for higher and higher voltage, if you are going for lower voltage maybe 100 kV a single conductor is sufficient. If you are going for 400 and 500 kilo volt system even though either AC or DC you have to go for the bundle conductors. In normal practice you will find if you are going for more than 400 or 400 kV system you have to go for the two conductors. If you are going for even though six, uh, 765 kV system you will find here four conductors. 
this I am talking about the AC system. In India, we have the 500 kV system and then we are going for the four conductors, four bundle conductors, they are operating at the same potential. Means for 500 kV system, here you are going for one pole, it is your four conductors and you are having another that is here that is you are having the four conductors. So, you are having all these are connected, bundles means they are connected at the regular intervals, means they are operating at the you can say go conductor, so another is your return conductor you can say. We are using the bundle conductors advantage you know because they reduce the corona loss because you are going for higher voltage the corona loss will be very significant. So, we are going for the bundling here so that we can reduce the corona loss and therefore we go for this. However, if you are going for AC here you know it also changes the inductance and capacitances that is very much required for the surge impedance loading of the conductors. So, in the monopolar operation the transmission scheme is the most economical and the first consideration is to use the ground as a return path for the DC current. If you are using only monopolar then you require one pole and ground will be used as a return path, but use of ground as a conductor is not permitted for the longer duration as I said. Here in the monopolar operation as I said the, the current will be flowing through the here the ground but it is not allowed for the longer duration due to the several reasons. For example, that that will be there will be some corrosion, there will be some problem of you can say radio interference and so many other problems will be occurring. So, the bipolar or homopolar operation, bipolar operation are very very common and feasible for the HVDC transmission. Only normally in the bipolar operation if one poles fail then the ground can be used as a return path for the temporary purpose. The basic principle of design of DC overhead lines is almost the same as AC lines design such as a configuration, tower, insulators, everything will be same only we have to see the voltage that is peak voltage. In DC the peak voltage is equal to its operating voltage, however, in this AC it will be under 2 times of RMS voltage. number of insulators, the clear clearance etcetera is required based on the DC voltage, wherever in the AC it is required on the peak voltage. Choice of the conductors depends mainly on the corona and the effect of and the field effect consideration and that is why if you see here if you are passing from Kanpur to Delhi you will find the two conductors are on very huge towers having the 4 4 conductors bundle it is a passing and that is basically Rehan Dadri HVDC line. Another component is your reactive power source. So, the reactive power source is required in HVDC link uh, basically at the terminal stations. As we know the converter does not consume the reactive power, but due to the phase displacement current drawn by the converter and the voltage in the AC system the reactive power requirement it will be there and it is normally it is a 50 to 60 percent of the real power transfer over the transmission line and it should it is normally provided by the filters, capacitors and the synchronous condensers. Sometimes even your HVDC link is very near to the generating station, so generators are also capable of providing even though if HVDC link is very near to your generating station here then reactive power support provided by this filter, here the generator can also provide the reactive power support support whenever required and also sometimes we use the synchronous condenser if the generators are not there or you can use the capacitor banks. Normally if it is in the load centers mid of this uh, load centers we have to go for the capacitor banks normally it is preferable because the synchronous condensers are expensive. Sometimes the synchronous the small synchronous condensers are used basically it is not only providing the reactive power support, but it provides the sinusoidal voltage that is used for the using the for your converter circuit. So, for it is basically for providing the natural computation of the inverters. Now, due to the harmonics and the transient are special design of the machines even the synchronous condensers are used and the capacitors we are using that they should also withstand the so many the transients, so many harmonics that may also enter in the system other than what is they are designed for. So, another component here is the earth electrode. As I said this ground is not used 
Normally, it is not used for the flowing the current, but during the emergency condition, we have to use the ground as a return path for the conductor. So, what happens? We have to use the grounding rods because the surface here, as I said, the earth sensitivity at the upper level is higher, and normally it is 4000 ohm per meter, ohm meter, and we cannot put the conductor or we cannot just connect here earth and the current will flow. So, we have to find where this resistivity is minimum, so that the resistance offered will be minimum and the current should flow. So, that is why here it is written the electrodes cannot be kept on this earth and it will be used for the return path. Electrodes are buried basically into the earth where the resistivity is around to 3 to 10. As I said on the surface it is approximately it is varying from soil to soil area to area and again it depends upon so many weather and geographically configuration um, meteorologically and geographically locations. But it is around the 4000 is the surface and if you are going deeper and deeper you will find the resistivity is from 3 to 10 ohm meter and so we have to bury our conductors so that we can get this resistivity. To reduce basically the transient over voltage during the line falls and also it gives the low direct uh, electric potential and also even the potential gradient at the surface of earth. So, the location of earth electrodes is also important due to the possible interference of the DC current ripples to the power lines, communication system of the telephones and the railway signaling as well. What happens even though your current which is flowing? If it is not very buried inside, it is on the uh, you can say upper surface, then the current which is having some ripples that will interfere to your communication system. Even though this overhead transmission line is very far far away from the communication system, but the ground current which is flowing, it may pass some communication system, it may pass to the railway signal and etcetera. So, it is important to go far deeper so that it should not interfere to other systems as well. Even though sometimes it also gives the corrosion as I discussed yesterday also, this metallic corrosion of the pipes and the cable seats can also be one of the concerns. Another major concern is the public safety. If you are putting on this, it is not deeply ground, it is not properly ground, then what will happen? There will be huge potential and that may give the shock to the uh, working, working people or maybe other people. So, the electrode must have the low resistance. It should have a normally it should be less than 0 0.1 ohm and buried up to 500 meter into the earth. So, as you can see it is 500 meter it is buried and even we put so many other th chemicals so that we can reduce the resistance and that is why the resistance to the current flow should be as minimum as possible. Another consideration is your the choice of voltage. How will you decide that which voltage level you have to go for? Because Suppose it is given to you that I want to go for 1000 megawatt megawatt power to flow and it is also decided that we have to go for the bipolar bipolar operation. Now it is to decide what will be the your voltage level. Now you know the power is given to you and this power means it is the rated power is a steady state power that you can flow without any problem means you have the PDC here and you know this PDC your VDC and then your IDC. The VDC source if it is a bipolar, bipolar then you know here thus it will be multiplied by 2 because here we are talking this VDC of one pole here. So, this is another is your this VDC. So, I the current which is flowing the wire and this two are going to be added because one is positive and the negative and then it is a twice of the VDC. Now, we have to now decide the current rating. Thus, we have to see what will be the size of your conductor. The conductor size are very standard in the region. They are very standards. Means, you have to see it is and you know the conductor's name that is used in our country and Asia and Europe, it is the name of all animals. Like we use the dog, panther, zebra, moose, squirrel, all these names of the conductors and they have a specific size and they are used. So, we have to see how much current that conductor can bear. So, based on that once current is decided, now finally for this power we can decide the voltage. So, this current if suppose you are going for 1 kilo ampere, 
then this VDC here is going to be 500. And this is, that's why we have our plus minus 500 here, KV, that is basically meant for the 1500 megawatt, means conductor here current is 1.5 kilo ampere. So we have to decide the voltage, now once the voltage is decided, then you have to design, you have to go for your, this span length of the towers, you have to see the height of the tower, you have to see the spacing of the tower. and then you have to complete see the routing of this you have to even the right of way right of way is nothing but if you are having a conductor a tower here that is going to be there and this conductor is hanging here so the distance here is called the right of way means we require this distance that should pass on so we should cut all the trees and other things because also the ground we don't want the trees and this side also because there will be flash over so we require some right of way and the clearance from various ministries and then we have to go for the passing of these conductors. To reduce the ripple in the DC system, basically we require the AC filters. As I said here, AC filter about this, but I didn't mention about the DC filters, but we also use the DC filters as well. And another option here, that you are having this is a converter. Here we are using this smoothing reactors and due to this smoothing reactors, the conduction of walls also it is not a sudden it is for example if we will see later on we are having this bridge converters this is a, if I will draw here this is your bridge converter this is 1 3 5 4 6 2 now we will say why I am using this number we will see later on this is very easy to uh, remember if Let's suppose your this is conducting this one and two. This is the three phases. Means we are having here E A and this is a conducting means we are having E C because this A, B and C phases are there. So this pulse will be automatically going. But due to this smoothing reactor and this leakage reactants here, it will be not suddenly suppose from here your th three is going to conduct, there is some overlap. So there is due to this even though some reduce reduction in the overlap and also the current which is going to change this is smoothing reactor will be there. And even though this it, certainly it will exist, we go further some here, some filters that is the DC filters we call it, we have to go for the DC filters as well. I did not mention here, as I said this AC side harmonics, it is your NP plus minus 1, it is AC side harmonics, but in the DC side we are going to have this NP harmonics means here if you are having 6 pulse, so it is 6, 12, here your 18, these harmonics are there, but the magnitudes are not so very high. But still we go for using some DC filters because we are going for the 6. If you are using 12 pulse, then it will be here the 12 and then you have to use for the some DC filters here. But still it will be there in your system, yes? Uh, in AC system we have different uh, protecting relaying and uh, circuit breakers and uh, all that for uh, maintenance and uh, operation. Yeah. Like in uh, DC we have any protection uh, equipment, switch care any? Uh, basically in the DC what we do here, this control of this valve itself work very fast and here this controller here itself we design in a such a way what will happen, why the protection system is required in AC, if there is some fault then the, the relay should sense and you should open your circuit breaker and clear the fault in that line means that faulty system must be isolated first and thereby then you can just see the actual problem and then you can reinstate that equipment later on. Here what happens now if suppose this is a converter, this is your line, this is your another inverter, let us suppose this is your system 6 pulse. Now if something goes wrong here there is some fault in this line or some reactor what will happen huge current will flow and huge current is flowing now the we will see later on one here converter will be looking for the voltage and other will be maintaining the current. So now to control the power here what I just said here this I should be constant. So one con converter control is dedicated for maintaining this current. What will happen if he will find any of the converter let us suppose this is the voltage and this is a current controlling. So if this will see this current is increasing. So what will happen if fault is there maybe if power is flowing from here that this is a current here from this side also current will be coming. So this will see the current is increasing 
what will do? It will try to reduce the voltage and slowly and slowly the voltage will be 0. So, what will happen if voltage is 0? There will be no current flow from here. Similarly, he will also find oh this voltage current is increasing this will also try to see and finally it will try to reduce the voltage and you know this control is very very fast even though your mechanical system like a circuit breaker it is also requiring several cycles three to four cycles for complete operation of a fault I mean, uh, uh, opening of the line it requires three to five cycles lesser than that time this controller can act and if fault is there they, they can operate at the zero potential now this zero volt what is happening the fault is gone and then you can inspect where is the problem and then again you can go for this. So, we do not use any here the circuit breaker here we simply the control of these two devices are right now good enough to see the whether fault is there and it should be cleared. So, we will see how these controllers even though how even the first how they are going to energize how they are just going to see how it is going to be 0 so that we can take it out for maintenance also all this starting and startup of the converters will be will discuss later on in the later our discussions. So, I was discussing about the voltage level this we saw that the voltage is decided by your power and then you have to see you have to go for the techno economic analysis that which options are better and thereby the voltage and the current and conductors are decided. So, at end now I can summarize in this lecture that we studied about this various components we saw the converters which is the major portion or major part of this HVDC transmission system we are going to have the two converters both at the rectification end and the inverter end if it is a two terminal HVDC system or we can go for three terminal if we are going for the three terminal HVDC then we require three converters. And in the converter as whole I mentioned as a broader category it is not a simple bridge converter here we require the controllers of these thyristor valves as well and that is a very very special part of this converter. So, converter I mean this bridge converter along with its controller and the controller is uh, having the major portion which we will discuss dedicated one module on the controller itself. Then another component which I discussed the transformer and I just showed that this transformer is not a simple transformer this simple means ordinary transformer which is used in the AC system it is specially made trans, uh, your online uh, OLTC transformers are used at both the converter stations and it should with withstand the harmonics as well at that time. Then we saw our filters filters are used to filter out the and now we are going to have the filters at both AC as well as the DC side means we are using the AC filters here and also we are using the DC filters to filter out the harmonics at this side or harmonics at this side. But we are using the limited number of filters and other filters are other harmonics are flowing in the system that is allowed because the magnitude is not significant. Now then I just discuss about the smoothing reactors and the purpose and finally I just discuss about the grounding rods that is used whenever in emergency condition we can use the ground as a return pass so that we can use the lower level of the earth for the providing the minimum impedance to this and the transmission line as I said the transmission line is not very special it is just like a simple H, uh, DC, uh, HV AC uh, transmission lines and the voltage level etcetera is decided based on the techno economic considerations and and this is the basically major components of your HVDC transmission system. So, on the next lecture we will discuss about the various uh, we will go for the converters and we will see why we are going to use the bridge converters for this HVDC applications. Thank you.